So ChatGPT with Vision is rolling out, as well as Dolly 3. And a lot of people are putting it up to the test. The results are a lot better than most expected. Can you spot Waldo in this picture? ChatGPT did. Waldo's located next to the center of the image. He's standing next to a table with various shoes on it. There's a table and looks like that's him. It identified him, what he's wearing, as well as the people around him. To his right, there's a woman in the yellow dress. To his left, there's a man in the red shirt. Kind of, I guess. My only quibble would be that this is not really the center of the image. But overall, it's impressive that ChatGPT is able to pick this guy up. But that's nothing compared to to this. So this is McKay Wrigley. He builds AI stuff. He showed ChatGPT a screenshot of his software as a service dashboard, and it wrote the code for it. I gave the new GPT-4 vision model this screenshot of a SaaS dashboard, and I asked it basically to break this down into components and write all the code. So I went through all the files, I pasted all the code in, I all this code here, and out came this. This was a first pass on the right here. You can see we've got sort of this menu here for all these menu options. It got all of those right. Obviously, the styles are different, but it got all of those right. It actually copied like the exact copy from the example here, right? You're getting the same number of the prop. It's getting a sales report. You can see like where calendar and download are. It's a little uh, different with like emojis, but. This is where it gets really impressive, where you see like the user activity charts here. The numbers aren't right, but you can see that like it actually did the double bar chart here. It did the countries. You can see the countries are the same, which is pretty incredible. The top selling items here, even it actually got that data. And like, I really want you to appreciate like all of this data in the table was actually 100% correct which is pretty nuts. And then of course we got even a line chart here, but considering I did not edit the code at all, this was a first pass. People are going to get better at prompting this. People are going to iterate on this. There are going to be a lot better ways to actually, you know, take this image and, you know, turn it into working code. All right. So that's cool. I took a screenshot of, of a software application and turns it into code, but can it figure out what the heck this is? So it looks like this says heist and escape. It looks like there's these lines that are moving deeper and deeper into something. A limbo. We have kidnap slash chase, hospital, etc. And some scribbled notes in here. Now, you might recognize this. This is Christopher Nolan's early diagram for Inception, the movie Inception. Somewhat complicated to understand, and this diagram helps a little bit. But let's see if Chad GPT is able to guess what the heck it's looking at. And it looks like it does. So it explains. So the diagram appears to be representative of the dream levels and the progression of the events in the movie Inception. The movie involves navigating through multiple levels of dreams, each deeper and more time dilated than the previous ones. And so it explains uh, the various, the linear progression, kind of the parallel, all the characters, figures out certain character names that are misspelled, and also figures out the words like kick are used in the context of the movie as a method to wake somebody up from a dream. This is incredibly impressive. And um, like he says, this isn't just OCR. This isn't about just reading the text on here. Here's another one from McKay, really talking about how he took a Teams whiteboard session and have it write code for you. Now, for people interested in building autonomous AI agents, one of the things that we talked about is having as really needing to take this to the next level, the final two Lego pieces were vision and memory. So it being able to have some sort of database to write down stuff that it needs to recall at a later time, plus something like this. So I mocked up this whiteboarding session here, right? This is just totally, as you're watching this, ask yourself the question, does this capability allow ChatGPT to basically navigate anything that you would see on your computer? To open up a browser and navigate a web page, open up an Excel, write some code for Excel, close it, etc. But I passed that photo to GPT-4 Vision with this basic prompt to generate the code for it. So it generated the code, I pasted that into VS Code here, and now watch this. So you're going to see step one here is enter your name. Check out the, the diagram here. So the model was able to see that I had these arrows and it actually flipped the order of these. And I wanted to test if it could do that. And sure enough, it does. Now, if I do um, my name here, and you're going to see, what is your email, McKay? Okay. You're going to see in this step, I specify it should refer to you by name once provided. So it, it flipped these steps. So it knew name, then email. And it knew once it got to email, it needed to refer to me by name. This is crazy. This is all on image. Um, I'm just going to put some fake stuff here. You're going to see 
we now, it's now asking us to confirm if we're over 18 or not, still referring to me by name. You're going to see, I split that here. Um, so one branch goes up here to show the site. The other goes to the second option here and you're going to see a crossed sorry screen and instead put kid version and you're going to see, I'm going to click no and we're getting welcome with the kid version of the site. So it knew that I had crossed that out and sent us here instead of building that. So just by passing this image, again, I just really want to emphasize this. All I did was pass this image in with this little prompt and it was able to figure out that these steps were switched, that it needed to refer to me by name. It had to do the logic of all of this. So it actually did the functionality. It was able to split these branches and it knew that I had crossed this off. So again, the super mock example, but that is not that it can handle that. That's a little prompt and it. I just want to point out here that he wrote, take a deep breath and think step-by-step step about how to, how you will do this. This is a powerful line. If you've been reading the, the paper, I believe it's DeepMind about how LMs can actually come up with better prompts for themselves to optimize their own prompts. This was one of the more powerful ones that I was able to come up with. So yeah, this guy is uh, reading his science papers. Okay, let's continue. Picture to recipe using ChatGPT4. Describe this dish, estimate its calories, and give me a recipe. I'm a big fan of rack of lamb. Costco has pretty good cuts, especially the stuff that they import from New Zealand. So I would love to be able to just take a picture of it and get some sort of recipe, or at least knowing what the heck is the stuff that goes on it. I'm actually kind of upset that this is cut off. I am genuinely interested. I want to eat this. But the other ones are this, some sort of a fish. What is that? Tuna or ahi? And how to prepare it. It's interesting. So it kind of figures out some of the stuff in it, and it thinks it's of a German origin, but the person corrects it. It's chicken paprikash. Ah, chicken paprikash. It's a traditional Hungarian dish known for its rich paprika-infused sauce, and then gives you the recipe. Here's one. Estimating the price of this outfit. Explain this infographic. This is going to be amazing. There's so much chart crime out there, and ChatGPT is about to slice through it like a samurai. So chart crimes for people that are not aware is just basically using various charts and graphs, kind of mis misrepresenting them in ways that misrepresent the truth to kind of prove a point that may not be accurate. This is Michael Backnick. You might have heard him on a bunch of podcasts, co-host of Animal Spirits. So for example, here's the rise of the S&P 500, so basically our stock market, but using 2009, the lowest point as the starting point, this, this, this looks good, but you know, there's a crash right here. Now we're choosing the high point. It's very easy to fall victim to stuff like this because no one's looking, you kind of assume that there's some good faith sort of thought put into these charts, but some people just want to make a point and they're going to skew the data wildly to make their point. And so the author concludes, this is hardly an exhaustive list. Chart manufacturers have endless ways to fool you. Stay woke. Or just plug it into ChatGPT. If you've ever been to a place like San Francisco and encountered something like this, you know this is no joke. I once parked in San Francisco overnight and I, miss, I, I, I misread one of these things and I guess the street cleaning was between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. or something like that on Tuesday, let's say, and I just happened to miss that. I woke up the next morning and came to find that my car had, and I kid you not, this is, this is a real story, had dirty used underwear wrapped around the windshield wipers of my car. So my assumption is that the street cleaners were not pleased with me being parked there and decided to stop and, uh, well, make it a point that I shouldn't park there. But if we had ChatGPT, you take a picture of it and you say, it's Wednesday at 4 p.m. Can I park at the spot right now? Tell me one line. Yes, you can park for up to one hour starting at 4 p.m. If, if this is accurate, this is going to be a game changer, especially in, in certain locations like San Francisco. And if it ever messes up, just uh, mail your parking ticket to OpenAI office. That's a good one here. Have a like. Then we upload this image. It took me kind of a second to process this information, but here's what ChatGPT says. In the first panel, each individual has a different shape in mind, but they seem to think they're on the same page as indicated by a text. I'm glad we all agree. In the second, the actual shape is revealed and it's evident that none of them were thinking the same thing. A moment of realization with the caption, oh. In the third panel, the figures are shown with different shapes again and aha as a sudden realization or insight. And then the last panel shows that after some discussion or thought, all have come to a consensus or some sort of shared understanding as they all envision the same shape. And the caption reaffirms, I'm glad we all agree. Overall, it seems to highlight the importance of communication, understanding and alignment in group settings. It suggests that even if individuals think they are aligned without clear communication, misunderstandings can occur. 
but with effort and discussion, a shared understanding can be achieved. I feel like it really nails this 100%. I guess maybe I would add that there's a refinement of ideas as we kind of share them and communicate them. Like group settings tend to refine certain ideas. So their ideas become a little bit more refined, right? From kind of going from simple shapes to a little bit more complex shapes. But overall, I feel like it, it kind of nailed it. And the person that posted it is saying that this is a completely new slash original image. So it's not that this AI is able to look up an explanation. It's generally sort of thinking through it and reasoning it. Let me see. I'm suspicious. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's true. Here's a, looks like this is a 2018 blog post with that image on there, but it's not in the Wayback Machine. The earliest one is September 25th. So I'm not 100% sure. Interestingly, it looks like, uh, yes, in fact, Jeff Patton was the person that came up with this in 2012, looks like the original image. This person says he apologized and that he believed it was original, but it is not. I actually didn't know this, but Mr. Gary Marcus makes an appearance. Gary Marcus loves to point out any errors made by AI and argues pretty aggressively against people that seem to be impressed with this stuff. He gets called a bully quite often, but in this situation, so they're saying that there's an error made on square two. In the second panel, when the actual shape a square is revealed, it's evident none of them were thinking of the same thing, leading to a moment of realization with the caption, oh. Okay, that's interesting. So I did sort of assume this was correct. And I, I, I think it is, but I could see where people, what people are saying. So in the second panel, when the actual shape a square is revealed, it's evident that none of them were thinking the same thing. So I read it as sort of the square, this blackboard or whatever, this is th their shapes are revealed what they were thinking. Cause here it's invisible what they're, what they're thinking. It's invisible to each other. Here's displayed. So as it's revealed, it's evident that none of them were thinking the same thing. I think the people that are saying it's wrong are pointing out that pointing to this, a square. So I get what they're saying. I feel like it's, it's, it's kind of nitpicky. I mean, the point is it got that this is a reveal of the actual shapes. But yeah, I could see how this is worded weirdly. What's wild is that the model gets two and three totally wrong. So three is in the third panel, the figures are shown with different shapes again, but this time there's an aha moment indicating a sudden realization of insight. Yeah, this idea of working out, taking their sort of ideas and working it out to make it more complex and, and different. So it's kind of like an, a fusion of all their ideas. It didn't mention that in here. But to say that these are completely wrong, I, I don't know. I mean, I get what they're saying, yes, but I, I don't know. It's, it's pretty impressive that it's able to follow it, that chain of logic and uh, come to what seems like a correct solution. The response is, that's just moving the goalpost, highlighting a case where it probably ran out of visual tokens it had to make an educated guess. Yes, there's indeed a square in that picture. To be anything less than amazed at how well it performed overall is absurd. And Gary Marcus, and he kind of makes this response quite often saying that we don't know what the training set contains. So how impressive or not impressive this is, you know, he's not going to be impressed by it, which is, I don't know if I fully get that. You're saying that no matter how amazing this thing gets at doing stuff, how well it does the jobs it's directed to do, none of that is impressive as long as there's something in its training set that, that makes it able to do that. That that doesn't seem right. Bizarre response disavowing the reality of where we are today. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, to me, it's a little bit like, you know, you get this bear riding a motorcycle. It's going like, oh man, his form is bad. He's not leaning into the turn enough. And, you know, and look, he's got these little grippers that he has to use to drive it or whatever. But it's like, yeah, but it's a bear on a freaking motorcycle. Can we just for a second appreciate that this is where we are? Either way. And on the other side of the equation is Dolly 3. This is pretty crazy, I gotta say, because it's sort of, it does seem like, I mean, a lot of this seems like it could be correct, right? Because it's like sort of the striation of the muscles seem to be similar to what you would see in, you know, maybe humans or cows or whatever. If, if you've seen those little diagrams of, of those muscles, this, this seems like it could be accurate. I wonder if Gary Mark is in the comments complaining about how like this is not correct or something. Here's Dolly 3. Stuff like this to me is now beginning to approach what, for example, Midjourney. Midjourney is my favorite AI generation tool. This is beginning to approach some of the stuff that it can do with the uh, field of view effects, with the bokeh effects, with the lighting. I wouldn't be surprised if these are more unique, like if Midjourney's closer to other existing stuff, whereas this is more and more unique stuff that's uh, that's being created. Here's what Bulbasaur's insides look like. Dolly 3 prompt. A key instruction semantics for assembling something. 
Here's a, what, space station? IKEA instruction for assembling a space station. This might be that, Spaceship from Space Odyssey. Creating comic books. What's this? Could it be a baby dinosaur egg, huh? Crack mama. And then I'm guessing that's mama. That's interesting. So you're able to create full-blown comics. And of course, my favorite, here's Dolly trying to do an XKCD comic. It doesn't make sense. Weather your issue? Peak irony achieved. Okay, this one makes no sense, but it does capture the style. I mean, literally, this reads just like it. Actually, in the prompt, they spelled out what the text should be. This story that makes sense, so they upload their data to the cloud, and then there's a weather issue, so the cloud is down. Peak irony achieved. Okay, that makes sense. Somebody gave it a IQ test, but it looks like it failed a lot of the questions. Now, when I tested GPT-4 with just sort of the text examples of this. So something like this, but with, with just text, no, no images. I found that it does fail it. And there's certain very specific things that it fails at. One is it can't really read its own responses. Two is that it can't sort of infer the reverse. So A is B. You know, if you say don't place B next to A, you know, you sort of assume that you can't place A next to B, but it can't sort of make that reverse logic, right? So as long as it doesn't put B next to A, it's fine. But I'll go ahead and I'll put A next to B. Anyways, I am personally very excited by this. There's a lot of people posting stuff like this where you give it a screenshot or a drawing and it builds out a full sort of, some sort of a web app, some sort of software application that, that actually functions correctly. I mean, we saw two, two examples here today. Combining this with, you know, multiple agents, something like Chad Dev, can you start building certain simple software applications? Maybe have ChatGPT do user testing, see what works, what doesn't, click on stuff. This is the next big leap forward. I get that a lot of people are saying that it's wrong and it makes mistakes and it's not perfect, but man, we're advancing rapidly. But what do you think? Have you had a chance to mess around with this yet? I just got back from a little trip, so I haven't had a chance to do any of this stuff. I plan to get back into the swing of things tomorrow, but love to hear your opinions. What have you tried? Did it succeed at it? Did it fail? Let me know in the comments. My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.